G'day guys, how's it going? My name is CJ. When it comes to smartphones, we quite often get caught up with certain features that make them stand out. 2017 has been the year of the bezel-less phone, 2016 was the year of waterproofing, and 2015 was all about industrial design. But we're reaching a point in the life cycle of smartphones where people now choose smartphones not only because of any singular feature or specifications, but more about what the experience is like and how it can actually improve our lives. So I've been using a phone for the last couple of weeks that does this really well. The phone that I'm talking about is of course the HTC U11. Better late than never, but let's take a look. So HTC's been through a couple of rough years recently. After such a promising start, they then stagnated with a bunch of lethargic releases. For example, the HTC One M8 with its really weak camera, the HTC One M9 which you didn't really know what it was good at, the HTC 10 which was alright but then it took a step back by reintroducing physical hardware keys, but now We've got the U11 and it's a promising sign that HTC perhaps is starting to turn it around. So first let's start talking about the design. Despite still sporting physical hardware navigation keys, the U11 is decidedly striking. Sporting the same glass manufacturing techniques that they adopted in the U Ultra, the U11 looks amazing. Depending on the angle that you're looking at the phone, the phone almost changes colour right before your eyes. And it really is a head turner, especially this solar red version that I've got here. It almost shines a golden colour in certain angles. Now if there was ever a phone that would match Iron Man's suit, it's probably this one right here. One massive caveat though with this glass design is that it's a massive fingerprint magnet. Something that, let's be honest, no glass back phone can really avoid. And that includes the Galaxy S8, the iPhone 8. The U11 has a really nice heft and it feels really good in the hand. The slight curvature of the glass on the back almost melts into the aluminium frame to provide a really well handling device. The buttons are solid and has a really nice tactile feel to it. And then on the bottom, you'll notice that there's a microphone, USB-C port, and a downfiring speaker. And unfortunately, if you keep looking around the aluminium frame, you're not going to find a headphone jack because it's gone. Then moving on to the front. And it's kind of bizarre because it kind of looks like there's a really thick pane of glass on the front. But this is due to the fact that HTC has really given a nice curve to the glass in order to improve ergonomics. Now keeping with the theme of thickness, as you could probably tell, the U11 is bezels galore, which completely goes against the trends of 2017. It's got a body to screen ratio reminiscent of the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 8 Plus, but at least in the earpiece it houses a nicely sized driver to act as a tweeter to provide stereo sound. And the speakers combined are excellent. The sound it pushes is crisp, detailed, has punchy bass, and it gets plenty loud without any distortion. And then you have the screen itself, which is a 5.5 inch IPS LCD display. It rocks a quad HD resolution with great viewing angles and color accuracy. It's no OLED display obviously, but it's still a great display nonetheless. And then powering the phone are specs that you'd probably expect in any 2017 flagship phone. It's got a Snapdragon 835, and your choice of between 4 to 6 gigabytes of RAM depending on the market and the model that you choose. And that also includes a choice between single SIM or dual SIM model. It also comes with micro SD expansion, so you're not going to be wanting for space. And then thanks to a massively toned down Sense UI, we've got one of the smoothest and fastest iterations of Android that I've ever seen outside of the Google Pixel and the OnePlus 5. Animations are smooth, fluid and there literally is no hint of any lag. But even then, I'm still not a big fan of Sense UI. The UI elements have really been toned down over the years, but something about it just doesn't look quite right. But then it's nothing a third party launcher can't fix. So after a little bit of tweaking, what you've got then is the closest you'll ever have to having a HTC Pixel outside of actually buying the Pixel 2 itself. It even comes with its own AI assistant, which I wouldn't bother at this point. It just ended up being an obnoxious distraction and I disabled it pretty quickly. And then speaking of the Pixel 2, one of the main features that they introduced during the keynote presentation was its new Active Edge feature where you can squeeze the phone to activate the Google Assistant. 
Turns out this feature isn't exactly unique and it was actually first introduced as part of the U11 under the guise of Edge Sense. And there's a little bit more customization to boot which makes it a little bit more useful than the one on the Google Pixel. You can set two different squeeze pressures to trigger two different functions. In my case, I've got it to trigger the camera and then also the Google Assistant. And in a bid to make it even more useful, you can further customize individual functions inside separate apps themselves to make them more useful. So for example, you can have Instagram open, give your phone a squeeze and it'll take a photo. So then moving on, it carries a modestly sized 3000 milliamp hour battery, which isn't exactly groundbreaking in terms of 2017 flagships, but the software optimization combined with HTC's own Boost Plus optimization features means I'm still able to hit around four and a half to five hours of screen on time. And to make it even more simple, I can reach the end of the day with about 20 to 30% of battery life left, even with fairly heavy use. So if you left low on juice during the day, you'll be glad to know that HTC included Quick Charge 3.0 into the phone. And so they say you can get around 50% of power following 30 minutes of charge. Now I'm not convinced that it's actually that fast, and it's definitely not as fast as OnePlus's dash charging, but it's still really quick nonetheless. Moving on to the best and for most people, the most important feature of any flagship smartphone, the camera. It sports a brilliant 12 megapixel single lens sensor that scored 90 on DxO Mark, which at the time was the highest scoring phone, at least for a little while until the Galaxy Note 8 and the iPhone 8 came around. That being said, we know that DxO Mark doesn't necessarily reflect real life usage. However, the numbers do give you a bit of an idea of how well it's going to perform. And in the U11's case, it performs really well. The dual pixel AF works really well and accurately. And then the large f1.7 aperture with optical image stabilization means it produced some of the best low light photos that I've seen in any phone in 2017. I recently took it on a trip to Tasmania and I was blown away by the performance. Dynamic range was excellent, sharpness was on point, and noise was really well controlled. And none of the photos showed any smartphone telltale signs of any over-processing that some other manufacturers are guilty of, like Samsung and LG. And then we have video, and obviously it shoots in 4K, and quality was on point. Now it doesn't have the same robust manual control features as we'd see in the LG V30. Video quality was clean and smooth and actually straight out of the phone, it's some of the best that I've seen in any smartphone today. The acoustic focus is also a nifty little feature, though I didn't find much use for it. But it would be useful in people who have friends or family who are performers and they want to go and record their performances and come back with the best audio quality possible. And then we've got the selfie camera which doesn't disappoint. It rocks a 16 megapixel sensor with an f2.0 aperture lens. What we end up with are supremely sharp and detailed selfies. Even in low light, we're still retaining a decent amount of detail and the photos still come out looking clean. Overall, I've got no qualms saying that the U11 has one of the best smartphone cameras that we've seen in any phone in 2017. And that's even compared to the big boys like Samsung, Apple, LG and Google themselves. So what we have then is a phone that just excels at being a smartphone. In a world where design quite often overlooks the user experience, the U11 does almost the exact opposite by melting away into the background and focusing on the user experience. So should you care about this phone? Well, we're almost seeing the creation of a new category within the smartphone market. To give an example, we've got cars, typical cars, and then we've got supercars like your Ferraris, the McLarens, Lamborghinis. And I think what we're seeing is the creation of the supercar category within the smartphones. And I think this is where the iPhone 10, the Google Pixel 2 XL, the Galaxy Note 8, these kind of phones will sit. In the HTC U11, what we've got is a typical car but with a few more premium features and a bit more premium feel to it. So you can probably compare it to a car like a Mercedes C-Class or a BMW 3 Series. It's got performance to match and one of the best cameras in any smartphone in 2017. And it's also got a relatively fair price. So if you're thinking of buying a flagship smartphone but don't really have the budget to buy something like the iPhone 10, then take a look at the HTC U11. You really can't go wrong. Anyway, what do you guys think? 
Do you like this phone? Do you think this phone is worth it? Or do you think this phone is just a complete waste of money and you should go for something else instead? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed what you saw, give us a like as it really helps the channel. And if you haven't already, do consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Say good day, mum, for me. Cheers. Thank you.